Good morning, my name is Sam, my pronouns are they, them, and welcome to day one of the Trans Rights Readathon. I am so sorry that you can hear my car running, but it is frozen. Um, I, <laughs> my windshield wipers are frozen. I am not a good New Englander. I did not prep my car well. It's my own fault. So <laughs> we're going to have to live with the consequences. So. I will be daily vlogging the Trans Rights Readathon again this year, and I am so excited. We're going to talk about my TBR a little bit more later when my car is not going full blast. But for now, I am starting with my audiobook is The Sacrifice by Rin Chepeco. I believe that's the author's name. I hope so. And my physical read is The Spirit Bears Its Teeth by Andrew Joseph White. So let's turn on my audiobook and wait for my car to be frost. have things to do we need to go to the library to get more books because we have a big snowstorm coming tomorrow and we need to go get some popcorn and some supplies so I am like 80% of the way through through the sacrifice by Rin, Ch Rin Chupeco sorry um, I'm loving it so far we're gonna talk more about it later Okay, hi, hello. So, I just got back from work now. Well, I didn't just get back from work. I have been running errands. I had to go to the library. Someone on TikTok recommended me Dreadnought, and it's something that I've known about for a while, but I didn't really know what it was about. So, then they told me what it was actually about, and I was like, oh my god. Um, I'm gonna go and grab that right now. So, I grabbed that. Um, and a couple other books that have nothing to do with the Trans Arts Readathon, those are for next week. So, those don't even matter at this point. But, I have been listening to The Sacrifice by Rin Chupeco, um, all day at work. I am 94% of the way through, and I am really, really enjoying this. I think that this, like, a really unexpected book for me to like, which I don't know why I didn't think that I was going to thoroughly enjoy this because years ago I read The Bone Rich by Rin Jibeko and I absolutely loved every single second of it. So I don't know what's wrong with me or why I thought that this wasn't going to be a favorite for me. This has a non-binary main protagonist and I really enjoy the way that transness was kind of brought into the story because it it's not subtle. It's like very clear but it's not a main point in the story at all. It's just like, oh, this main character is non-binary. Okay, let's go on with the story. So this is set on an island in the Filipinos, um, and it is about a film crew that comes by and they're planning on doing like this three season documentary on a cursed island. Um, and there are a lot of different reasons that a lot of different people are there, but all you really need to know is that they are there and in classic Hollywood style many of them are horrible people. Horrible horrible people who do horrible horrible things both on the island and just in their daily lives. Our main character Alan is kind of like a keeper of this island that this god kind of exists on. I, not exists on but like it's it's kind of like this god's little, little island. Um, and 
Some people have been sacrificed over the years. There have been some horrible things that happened on the island. This kid Alon, they're 18 and they're just there taking care of the island. They're one of the only people who can spend time on the island. They end up like being the tour guide or whatever. That's what the Hollywood producers call it for this production set. Um, and realistically, Alon knows that things are going to go horribly wrong. And they're just kind of there hanging out. They end up getting super attached to one of the producer's sons, Chase, who is just a sweet baby angel. So this is all around just like queer, fun. It kind of gives off the effects of mushroom horror for me. So I love mushroom horror so much. I think it's so interesting and so wonderful. And this is not mushroom horror. This is definitely like the island is like pulling its branches into your body kind of scenario, but it's not mushroom horror, but it gives some of the same effects of mushroom horror, which I love so much. It is so good. So this is a YA horror. YA horror is really like coming out of the woodwork so far and I'm not going to give a rating to this yet because I still have another 5% to go. But so far I'm really loving it. And that's where we're at so far for where I'm at with this book. So let's change positions and we could talk about my TBR. So let's talk TBR for the Trans Rights Readathon. Do I think that my TBR is reasonable or really possible at all? Not really, but I'm just kind of tossing it out into the universe for me of here's a big pool that I would like to pull from that I have access to at this point. So let's talk physical books first. <laughs> okay, so physical books first. We have Queen of the Conquered by Case and Calendar. Um, I believe this is a Caribbean fantasy. Um, it is not standalone, but I know that Case and Calendar does have some other standalone. Um, I don't know if there is a trans character specifically in this story, but this author is trans and I've been wanting to pick up their work. Well, I've had this book on my shelves for, for many years, like well over five years at this point. So I kind of want to read what's on my shelf by them before I go out and pick up another book by them. So we're going with this one and I'm counting it. Next, we have Meet Cute Diary by Emery Lee. Again, an author that I am just really interested in picking up. Uh, I've heard some fantastic things about Emery Lee as an author. So I'm super curious about getting into them. And I know that this is like a cute YA contemporary romance. So something to break up the fantasy and horror that I tend to lean towards when it comes to my reading lately. Because I have been super into horror lately. I feel like it's been like a year that I've been super into horror. Speaking of horror, The Spirit Bears Its Teeth by Andrew Joseph White. Victorian trans boy psychic. Can't ask for anything better. We have Pet by Akweke Amezi. Akweke Amezi is one of my all-time favorite authors. I think this is the only book of theirs that I haven't read so far, I believe. Um, for some stupid reason, I read Bitter before I read Pet, so now I have to read Pet, obviously, because I really, really loved Bitter. So... Time to get into that. And then we have Dreadnought by April Daniels is what I'm going with. Um, and this is about someone who gets like these hardcore superpowers tossed onto her and when those superpowers get tossed onto her it transforms her body into what she has always thought it should look like. Super interesting. And it's not super long either. I haven't really enjoyed a superhero story since I read, um, uh, since I read that series, I don't even remember what it's called, by Marissa Meyer. And I didn't even, like, really like it. I just didn't dislike it. So I'm hoping that this one will be a good superhero one for me. Let's go over to audiobooks and ebooks now. 
we have Tell Me I'm Worthless by Alyssa Rumfit, which I believe is a YA horror. Super excited about it. I'm really intrigued by the title or the cover more than anything and I'm just wanting to pick it up because again horror. Then we have Yours Insatiably by Avita Weiss which is monster erotica. Always need that in my life. Has to happen. And then we have Feed Them Silence by Lee Mandelo. If you didn't know I just finished the Woods All Black by Lee Mandelo. I gave it a five stars, so let's just keep it going with him. Love him. Love him. Um, next we have Making Love with the Land by Joshua Whitehead. So I found this and I decided to pick it up because Joshua Whitehead was the editor in like the only anthology that I have ever given like five stars to. It was Love After the End, an anthology of two-spirit and indigiqueer indigi speculative fiction. I loved that anthology so much. I didn't know Joshua Whitehead published things on his own. But now I know. Now I'm grabbing it. And if you're looking for something to read to add to your TBR, that anthology is beautiful. It's fantastic. It's indigenous, it's trans, it's everything. Next we have The Sacrifice by Rin Petko, which I'm almost done with and we have spoken about. And then finally we have Empress of Sorrow and Fortune by I'm just I'm gonna put it here because I don't want to be so disrespectful disrespectful and ruin that name. This one's only like a two hour audiobook so I'm really interested in it. I don't really know anything about it. But I'm curious about it nonetheless. <laughs> so that leaves us with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That leaves me with eleven books for seven days. Do I think that I'm gonna get that far? No. Can I hope and dream? Yes, I'm going to continue to hope and dream. So with that, I think that you have heard enough of my talking for now, so let's go get cozy and start on some dinner. <laughs>